So, Francis, let's unpack the situation now because we know there have been comments, protests, uh, petitions from various quarters across the globe on this. And internet trolls from South Africa now striking up a new trend on social media while the rest of the world has uh, called on the dissolution of Nigeria's infamous special anti-robbery squad SARS with Hashtag NSARS, a faction of alleged xenophobes, as it's been said, have created uh, uh, one saying that SARS must rise, seen as encouraging in some quarters the killing of innocent protesters. Observers saying SARS must rise is a direct affront to efforts of many prominent persons who have set forward to call for an end to the scale of violence witnessed in Nigeria. Uh, this past couple of weeks to talk about this. So let's uh, connect now with Professor Ibo Mandaza, who's an author and political analyst, to talk about... Uh, firstly, let me invite you, Professor Mandaza, for your comments on what we've seen now that... Um, statement from State House President Buhari having met with uh, special security advisors. Did you expect uh, the lack of depth that I'd say that seeing uh, the complaints that we've seen about how it doesn't really address the issue? Well, I'm not surprised. Uh, this is the nature of the states uh, in, on our continent. And it's, it's interesting that you had a, you had a reaction from ECOWAS before the government of Nigeria itself. And I think that it's, uh, the ECOWAS statement was very interesting in the sense that it, 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 it addressed two things. First was that the Nigerian government has had to, to concede to public pressure to disband SARS. And secondly, that ECOWAS condemned the, the killing of innocent protesters. Uh, and that's very interesting and in, in strong contrast to the situation in Southern Africa. And I want to draw on that, Professor Mandaza, because I want you to please, uh, if you can, draw parallels uh, of uh, police brutality. Let's look at Southern Africa. You are uh, in Zimbabwe. That is something that was also uh, been at the forefront of news headlines yeah, that's recently. Pre- that's- that's precisely the point I'm making, that you have ECOWAS issuing a statement out of Abuja, in the heart of Nigeria, against the brutality of the uh, security forces in Nigeria. And yet, in, by contrast, in Southern Africa, you have absolute silence from SADC in the face of brutality on security forces on, on innocent civilians in, in, in Zimbabwe. That's, that's very interesting, isn't it? Mm. Yes, uh, that's the first point I wanted to make. And I want to that talk they, about why we have this in our contemporary history. You speak about uh, Zimbabwe, uh, South Africans, where uh, this hashtag, which has obviously been slammed, and uh, uh, rightly so, that of SARS must rise, has also, in recent months, uh, on the onset of the lockdown scene, police brutality and the management of that, uh, military being involved. And, and I want to just look back at the, these three countries. Why are we seeing these kind of scenes in our contemporary history? Well, the, 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 the Sazba's rise, uh, that's very stupid, I think. Senseless. And one cannot explain it, except in terms of ignorance of the situation in, 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 in our countries. I can't understand any, why anyone would promote uh, uh, pro- police brutality and, and, and urge that th- that continues when, in fact, the government of Nigeria itself recognizes that this is, has been a very bad strategy altogether. Professor Mendoza, as I was saying, I, I want to understand, and just reflecting on what um, uh, President Buhari was saying, he recognized that, yes, indeed, there needs to be reform. He did, though, a, in the same token, thank the police for the job that they're doing. And the complaint, and this is why young people and those who support the protest have continued to be on the streets. They're saying it's merely paying lip service to the infrastructure, the state security infrastructure uh, that is uh, willy-nilly, indiscriminately targeting young people. Uh, so 
Again, I'll go back to this question of, uh, uh, given our colonial histories and Zimbabwe, South Africa, Nigeria, why is this something that is still uh, prevalent in our um, current history, our contemporary history? I I is it because the infrastructure that had been there that was oppressive has not been dismantled? Yes, I think it also it, has, it, it speaks to the nature of the state. The state is, is essentially a coercive instrument. And Nigeria, like Zimbabwe, have a military background. And uh, we've, we thought Nigeria had moved on from its, from its unpleasant past. But what happened in the last few days is indi indication that the, the, the coercive instruments of the state are still very alive. But I, I wanted to say that basically we're glad that there's been this outcry. Sadly, as usual, the UN, the, the donor countries were the first to issue statements long before us as Africans issued any statement. Mm. The AU statement was, came far behind and as usual very, very ambivalent. And, and, and I think that the legacy that we have inherited from the colonialists and perfected in our own hands as states under siege, especially in Zimbabwe, states which are intolerant of protests, states were, which were, 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 were violent in their reaction, preemptive in the manner in which they, they, they react to the population. You know, we, I don't think we can, we can any longer blame the colonialists for it. Mm. And, and I, I want to talk on, about on, that. On, we can only, we have blame it on ourselves. Mm. Uh, in the case of Zimbabwe, we are 40 years away from colonial rule. Okay. In South Africa, you are more than 20 years away from apartheid rule. And I want to zero we, in on that well, side. No, no, listen, we must take responsibility for our own actions as Africans, mm. first and foremost, and recognize the, 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 the pathologies within our own situations and deal with them frontally. So, Professor Mendoza, let's talk about that. How do we deal with the pathologies? What is the source of those pathologies? You mentioned earlier on how Nigeria and South Africa have a common uh, military history of brutality. And uh, this uh, hashtag that we mentioned earlier on that you also mentioned the stupid uh, SARS must rise. What is it as a result of these xenophobic elements? Is it uh, uh, the psyche of both nations leading to a battle of resources, lack of empathy? Is it survival mode? What is it? What are those pathologies? Well, I think first of all, it's poor leadership. Hmm. Leadership not able to take responsibility. A, a leadership which tends to, de to, to deflect responsibility. A leadership which is not, which not keen or able to, to inform it's the population of the religious situation. A, a, a leadership which wants to scapegoat its own failures. And I think that we need strong vision leadership. What's happening in our countries is something that would not have happened uh, a few years ago in our countries, in Zambia and Tanzania, for example. So I think we need to, ex to uh, to introspect and, 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 and confront the issues as they are. Um, the, 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 the redeeming factor is this, and I think it speaks well for South Africa itself, but also for Nigeria. The, the mass movements in Nigeria, the civic societies, are so strong you had, unlike in Zimbabwe, where, where with the civil society is very, very, very distorted, very depleted, because we have 75% of our professional skilled people outside the country. In Nigeria, you have a mass of civic societies. We have been able to roll back the SARS, for example. We have been able to stand up, as you said uh, a few minutes ago, the civic society groups uh, remain on the ground. They have become a major factor. So I think in the kind of things happening in Zimbabwe, uh, 
are not likely to happen in South Africa because of your civic society is much stronger, much more vibrant, uh, and you have, you have a history of mass struggles in South Africa. And I want um, to take that and, 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 I, and I think, and I, think I think Nigeria is is is, a, is an example to 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 watch the next in the months to come. Mm. Um, it's a very vibrant society, and I think the military, the the government in Nigeria, I almost said military because they're behaving like a military government. They have to watch it really because really the. The, the 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 developments there I like you to bring about a new reality that we we least expect in Nigeria and as you mentioned there has been strong civil support for the hashtag and SARS um, petitions all across the world we've seen influencers politicians in South Africa supporting this and I, I want to pick up on that you spoke about the failure of leadership the failure of institutions I mean if we look at some of the uh, tweets that have been coming through on why people are supporting SARS must rise they are talking about bringing an end to um, uh, sex slavery uh, human trafficking drug dealers so that speaks to a failure of the criminal justice system in South Africa. Let's reflect on uh, Nigeria, where the problems lie there, because uh, President Muhammadu Buhari seems to be pointing a picture of uh, democracy that is not as young, but is, is still pretty much forging its way ahead, that is on track with a good developmental agenda. Would you agree? Yes, I agree that uh, what's happening in Nigeria is a reflection of, of a struggle uh, in that country. The struggle in which we, we must remember, we, we had, a, we had a, a legacy of military coups, counter coups. We had, a, uh, we had, a, we had a, a, a retreat from military rule, uh, who sadly with some vestige of showing themselves as it happened regrettably in the last two days. And I'm saying that the Nigerians are facing up to it. The Nigerian population are facing up to it. And the Nigerian artists, soccer players, are speaking against it. And, and in strong contrast to our situation in Zimbabwe, where our musicians, our cultural artists did not speak up, as people were shot on the 1st on the first of, of August 19, uh, 2018. So the, the contrasting situations in terms of our regional organizations echo us which is proactive and reacts even the heart of Nigeria okay. itself. And as SADC, which is just silent or virtually useless, uh, and, 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 and uh, a, a situation in which our civic societies in Zimbabwe, for example, okay. do not show the kind of strength and resolve that the Nigerians' uh, counterparts are showing. Thank you so much. These are very yes. Thank you so much for speaking to us and sharing your insights. Author and uh, political analyst Professor Ibo Mandaza just uh, drawing a, a triangle reflecting on the commonalities and differences between Nigeria, South Africa and Zimbabwe with regards uh, to this violence.